Hey guys, just want to take a quick second to mention this magazine that every bus nut, geek, and enthusiast should check out, especially if you're one of those history nuts as well. It's called Vintage Coach Magazines, and if you subscribe, you'll get issue after issue of awesome info, facts, and stories of old motor coaches, as well as some awesome pictures, as well as some fun vintage ads from back in the day. And just a bit of a sneak peek, I think I'm going to be featured in one of the next issues. But check out the website VintageMotorCoach.com and order your subscription today. I'll put the link down in the description box below. Make sure you guys go take a look. And I just want to say that I'm getting tons of uh, fan mail right now and a bunch of you guys are sending me some awesome stuff. I've recorded all of it so I'm going to be doing another kind of episode where I'm opening fan mail and gift packages. I can't thank you guys enough for sending me all this. It means a lot to me, so much appreciated. Stay tuned for the next uh, fan mail opening episode. I'll probably put those in between episodes of Motor Coach World, but on to today's video. Hey, what is going on all you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James, and happy holidays. In the US, there are primarily three large players when it comes to dominating the coach bus brand name. Van Hool, MCI, which stands for Motor Coach Industries, and Prevo. Are, are you just trying to piss me off, or is that really how you say that? Now, aside from these three main brands of coach buses, there are a few other smaller players that one can choose to buy when building their fleet. There's Cetra, Temsa, which is a Turkish coach bus company that entered into the US market back in 2010. And there's Irizar, which is a Spanish coach bus maker that entered into the US market in 2016. Oh, and there's also the Volvo brand motor coach, which entered the US market back in 2009 through their partnership and ownership of Prevo. If you decide to open a bus company here in the US or Canada, that's pretty much all you have to choose from, unless you want to buy a really off brand that you're not going to be able to get parts and service for, uh, at least not for cheap. But before you start to complain about not having enough options, you should take a look at what's under the hood. What might look like a row of identical looking motor coaches can be pretty deceiving. The components and guts within them can be completely different. That's right, two motor coaches of the same exact make and model sitting next to each other can have a completely different loadout when it comes to the engine, transmission, and all the guts in between. This can really throw off an inexperienced motor coach diesel tech as doing any kind of repair or maintenance on two motor coaches that look identical on the outside may need a completely different set of tools, diagnostic equipment, and manuals to get the job done. No microfusion initiators. No power converters, at least none that I can find. I can't even determine if it has a warp drive. But today, we're gonna take a look at what's under the hood of a bus and basically what kind of engines are used in coach buses here in the US and Canada. Just a heads up guys, today's video is gonna be really heavy on the geeky tech side of things. So if you're into that, I think you're gonna kick out of today's video. Detroit Diesel, a well-known and cherished engine manufacturer by many heavy equipment industries out there, is also known for making many types of motor coach engines. Specifically on the motor coach side of things, Detroit Diesel produces a very renowned and cherished engine in the motor coach world. Known as the Detroit Series 60, which came in a 12.7 liter and a 14 liter version, producing between 330 and 605 horsepower. Between the mid-1990s and up to the late 2000s, the Detroit Series 60 engines were widely used to power motor coaches such as the MCI DL3 slash D4500, the MCI E and J models, as well as the Van Hool C2045, Prevo H345 models, as well as the Cetra S417 North American version. The Detroit Series 60 was discontinued in 2011, replaced with the newer DD13 engine at 12.8 liters, producing up to 470 horsepower. However, in September 2019, Detroit announced that as of December 2021, it will discontinue production of the DD13 engine and exit the motor coach market altogether. Detroit engines for the untrained eye can be easily recognized by their coat of grayish blue paint. 
Another common engine one would find under the hood of a motor coach, or I should start saying behind the engine hatch of a motor coach, is the Caterpillar engine. Although Caterpillar started making engines back in the 1930s, it was mostly for large construction equipment and earth movers. Between the late 80s and early 90s, Cat started producing several different series of engines for over-the-road vehicles, like semi-trucks and, well, you guessed it, motor coaches. Lucky guess. Between the mid-90s and 2000s, Caterpillar offered engines such as the Cat C9, which came in an 8.8 liter, 330 horsepower variant, and after 2007, Cat C9 came in a more robust 9.3 liter and 335 horsepower variant. The Cat C10, a 10.3 liter engine offering 350 horsepower, and the Cat C12, a 12 liter engine that offered a maximum of 430 horsepower. These engines were found on board many MCI DL3s, the D4500, and the MCI E and J models, as well as the Van Hool C2045 models. Early versions of the Temsa TS35 motor coach were also offered with a smaller Cat C9 as an option. In the mid-2000s, many motor coaches built with the Cat engines were outfitted with the Cat C13, which met the higher emission standards of the time. In 2005 and 2009, Caterpillar released a series of Cat C13 and C15 Acert engines, which had a new diesel particulate filter technology in them to reduce carbon emissions in order to meet the new EPA standards. However, these engines had severe reliability problems, costing not only the motor coach industry, but the trucking industry as well, millions of dollars in road failures due to the clogging of the new diesel particulate filters. This resulted in a huge class action lawsuit with Caterpillar, which really hurt their reputation for building over-the-road engines. In June of 2008, Caterpillar announced that they would no longer be producing over-the-road engines by 2010 due to the stringent and demanding regulations set by the EPA. Now, I did do a video covering this topic on this channel a while ago. Please feel free to check it out. If you're interested, link will be up here and down below. Caterpillar engines can be easily recognized by their iconic yellow color paint for those who are less gearhead savvy. Gearhead savvy, is that another thing? With Detroit and Caterpillar ceasing production of motor coach and bus engines, Cummins is left an entire industry with only one other competitor. Cummins is a company that started in 1919, founded in Columbus, Indiana. The Cummins brand had a steadfast reputation for being powerful and reliable. In the motor coach world, Cummins has always been an option on several different make and models of motor coaches throughout the years, though not as popular of an engine choice back in the 1990s for coach bus buyers. With Detroit and Caterpillar withdrawing from the motor coach market, Cummins is quickly becoming a star player as far as being a powertrain option for buses. As of 1993, MCI's DL3s and D4500s offered the Cummins M11 10.8 liter engine as an option. Offered with two different variants, the M11 280E, which produced 280 horsepower, and the M11 330E, with an available 330 horsepower. MCI's E models were offered with the Cummins ISM 10.8 liter engine with 350 horsepower from 2001 to 2011. However, it's important to mention that starting in 2007 to 2010, MCI's E and J models were available with the ISM 10.8 liter, but this time with a much higher 410 horsepower available. Van Hool C2045s were also offered with the ISM 10.8 liter engine, however with a 450 horsepower variant. For both MCI and Van Hool, from 2010 to 2020, the ISM 10.8 liter option was replaced with the 11.9 liter ISX 12 engine with an available 425 horsepower. By the end of 2020, Cummins updated the ISX 12 with a similar, more efficient X12 engine with three different sub-variants offering between 410 to 455 horsepower that complies with the 2017 EPA emission standards. On top of MCI and Van Hool, the 45-foot Timsa TS45, which had entered into the US coach market, was offered solely with the ISX-12 option. Timsa's smaller 35-foot TS35s were offered with the Cummins ISL 8.9 liter engine. Between 2008 and 2010, the ISL 8.9 liter gave the little 35 footer coach a whopping 365 horsepower. But after the EPA standards increased, the ISL 8.9 liter was derated to only offer 345 horsepower between 
2011 and 2018. Starting in 2019 to as of today, 2021, the 35 foot Tempsa TS35 is now offered with the 8.9 liter Cummins L9, giving it an available 350 horsepower. Cummins engines are easily identified by its iconic red paint scheme. A very popular and successful European car and truck manufacturer, Volvo, entered into the U.S. motor coach market in 2008 with its Volvo 9700 motor coach. Although the coach was available in the European market since 2001, Volvo did several updates to the coach design and layout before offering it to the North American market. Aside from the production of cars and buses, Volvo also produced its own truck and bus engines. Starting in 2007, Volvo began powering the iconic Prevo H345 as well as the Prevo X345 coaches with their 13 liter Volvo D13 engine with an available 435 horsepower. From 2010 to present, the Prevo H345 and X series are solely offered with the Volvo D13 and no longer available with the Detroit engine as an option. That kind of makes sense since Detroit isn't making them anymore. Volvo engines are typically painted with a military green color with some of their newer engines painted with the combination of silver and blue. Now with all the different engine types and coach models mentioned in today's video, it's important to note that some of these coaches use a completely different engine outside of the US. Coaches like the Cetra and the Van Hool and Tempsa that are built in Europe and other parts of the world and are exported here may not have the same engines powering them in their native countries. And since today's video focuses on the engines used on motor coaches in the US, please do not assume that the same engines that I've mentioned in this video are used all over the world because they're not. Now on a personal note, because I know I'm going to be asked about this by many of you in the comment section, my personal favorite engine is the Detroit Series 60 combined with a Allison B500 transmission. Now, I know we didn't cover any transmissions in today's video, but I promise we will cover that topic in one of the upcoming videos. But for me, a Detroit Series 60 paired with a Allison transmission is a solid tried and true design that provides both dependability as well as a smooth ride. I'm kind of sad that Detroit 60s are no longer being made. Now, I'm not a mechanic, and this is purely coming from my own personal opinion as a driver that has logged many miles and hours on buses outfitted with the Detroit 60 and Allison combo. So please don't take my word for it when you go out bus shopping, just because I said I like the Detroit and Allison. I, I, I just like the way they drive. Also, please let me know down in the comments below what your favorite engine is if you have one as a driver and for all you mechanics and gearheads out there. I really want to see your perspective on this matter. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you like the channel and want to show your support, please go and check out my Patreon page and become a patron. For a dollar a month, your contribution would go towards things like camera equipment updates to a cup of coffee so that I can stay caffeinated deep into the hours of the night making these videos. Also, if you didn't know already, I have Motor Coach World merch available. If you want to stay warm this winter and in style, like this really cool hoodie I'm wearing today, check out my merch store at bonfire.com slash store slash Motor Coach World. I'll put all the links down in the description box below. And remember, if you're watching this, you are part of the Motor Coach World.